and welcome. I invite you to join in singing our opening song, number 560, 10,000 Reasons. Number 560, please rise. Mm -hmm. Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And, and with your spirit. spirit. Brothers and sisters, I'm uh, Father Justin. I'm the, the pastor here at the St. Thomas More, and until its closure in April, the pastor at St. Catherine of Siena. So I want to welcome in a special way um, our families who have laid to rest a loved one from both of these communities in the last year, and who are honoring their loved one on this All Souls Day. As we gather, it was called to mind moments when we have failed to be completely open to the love of God in our lives and ask now for the Lord's forgiveness and peace. Lord Jesus, you came to reconcile us to one another and to the Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you come in word and sacrament to strengthen us in holiness. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you will come in glory with salvation for your people. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Amen. 
Let us pray. O God, who willed that your only begotten Son, having conquered death, should pass over into the realm of heaven, grant, we pray, to your departed servants that with the mortality of this life overcome, they may gaze eternally on you, their Creator and Redeemer. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Book of Wisdom. The souls of the just are in the hand of God, and no torment shall touch them. They seemed, in the view of the foolish, to be dead, and their passing away was thought an affliction, and their going forth from us utter destruction. But they are in peace. For if before men, indeed, they be punished, yet is their hope full of immortality. Chastised a little, they shall be greatly blessed, because God tried them and found them worthy of himself. As gold in the furnace, he proved them, and as sacrificial offerings, he took them to himself. In the time of their visitation, they shall shine and shall dart about as sparks through stubble. They shall judge nations and rule over peoples, and the Lord shall be their king forever. Those who trust in him shall understand truth, and the faithful shall abide with him in love, because grace and mercy are with his holy ones, and his care is with the elect. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I should wonder 
reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, if God is for us, who can be against us? He did not spare his own son, but handed him over for us all. Will he not also give us everything else along with him? Who will bring a charge against God's chosen ones? It is God who acquits us, who will condemn. It is Christ Jesus who died, rather was raised, who is also at the right hand of God, who indeed intercedes for us. What, we, what will separate us from the love of Christ? Will anguish or distress or persecution or famine, or nakedness, or peril, or the sword. No, in all these things, we conquer overwhelmingly through him who loved us. For I am convinced that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor present things, nor future things, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus, our Lord. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory, Glory to you, Lord. Jesus raised his eyes to heaven and said, Father, those whom you gave me are your gift to me. I wish that where I am, they also may be with me, that they may see my glory that you gave me, because you loved me before the foundation of the world. Righteous Father, the world also does not know you, but I know you, and they know that you sent me. I had made known to them your name, and I will make it known, that the love with which you loved me may be in them, and I in them. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. In the gospel today, Jesus utters a prayer to his Father. This is leading up to Jesus' passion and death. He's trying to tie up loose ends before, before he leaves them, leaves this earthly world. And he offers this prayer in a way that they can overhear. They can tell what the movement of his heart is, his disciples. And what they hear is a desire for them to know the way that Jesus himself feels loved. What Jesus is exclaiming is, is this joy at being loved in a perfect way by his Father. And Jesus fully receiving that love being capable of completely accepting it into his life. And Jesus' prayer then is that his disciples, his listeners, those who are overhearing, and today that's us, might experience the same thing. The ability to receive and accept a perfect love. On this side of eternity, each of us struggles to do that. We profess how much God loves each of us, calls us by name, knows how many hairs are on our head, understands our trials and tribulations intimately. We know he loves us, and yet, because of the constricting nature of, of a fallen world, we struggle to receive that love well. We find ways to deflect it or dismiss it or ignore it. Today, All Souls Day, is a day that the church reinvests in this prayer that Jesus uttered to his Father a prayer of hope for each of us. And it's a prayer that we can echo then when we call to mind our loved ones who we've laid to rest, especially those that we have commended to the Lord in the last year. The prayer of the church for the faithful departed is that their hearts might be opened more and more until there is a fullness of reception to the love that God has for them. No deflection, no dismissiveness, no ignorance. Just the ability to completely absorb and to take in and rejoice the Father's loving gaze upon them. And so today is a day as we 
remember our loved ones, to do so with confidence. Because before we can utter a prayer of deep longing desire for a husband or a wife, a mother or a father, a brother or sister, a son or daughter who we've laid to rest, before we've offered that prayer, Jesus has offered it ahead of us. A prayer that that one might be able to receive the love of God in its fullness. So with great confidence that Jesus' prayer to his Father will not go unheard, let us continue our liturgy this evening and confidently offer our prayers for our brothers and sisters who have been laid to rest. Brothers and sisters, please stand as we now offer those prayers for husbands and wives, sons and daughters, mothers and fathers, brothers and sisters, that the Lord might receive them well into his tender care. For all who have received Christ, may God grant them life without end. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For elected and appointed leaders, may God grant them the grace to work for peace with justice among all people. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who are grieving, may God grant them peace, healing, and hope. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who minister to the grieving, may God grant them the grace to be conduits of God's peace healing, and hope. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the joy and peace of the faithful departed, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the intentions we bring to Mass, including the repose of the soul of Edward Kruger, for whom this Mass is offered, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Father, we gather this evening as your sons and daughters. We call to mind our loved ones from the St. Thomas More and St. Catherine of Siena communities, those who have been laid to rest in the last year. Lord, we ask that you grace them with the ability to receive more fully your loving gaze upon them and grant us the courage and strength to continue our pilgrimage until we are reunited them in eternal joy in your kingdom. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Friends, please be seated as our altar is prepared. I invite you to join in singing number 461. I has not seen number 461.
and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands. Praise the Lord's name. Praise the Lord. Receive, Lord, in your kindness the sacrificial offering we make for all your servants who sleep in Christ, that set free from the bonds of death by this singular sacrifice they may merit eternal life through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with Lift up your hearts. Lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, it, is right and just. it is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For as one alone, he accepted death, so that we might all escape from dying. As one man, he chose to die, so that in your sight we all might live forever. And so in company with the choirs of angels, we praise you, and with joy we proclaim. rightly gives you praise for through your son our lord jesus christ by the power and working of the holy spirit you give life to all things and make them holy and you never cease to gather a people to yourself so that from the rising of the sun to its setting a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name therefore o lord we humbly implore you by the same spirit graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me.
the mystery of faith. We proclaim the death of the Lord and profess the resurrection until you come again. Therefore, O oh Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you willed to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with St. Thomas More and St. Catherine of Siena, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis, our Pope, and James, our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. Remember your servants whom you have called from this world to yourself. Grant that they who were united with your son in a death like his may also be one with him in his resurrection, when from the earth he will raise up in the flesh those who have died and transform our lowly body after the pattern of his own glorious body. To our departed brothers and sisters too, and to all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory, when you will wipe away every tear from our eyes. For seeing you, our God, as you are, we shall be like you for all the ages and praise you without end through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. The kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. 
The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Our communion song is number 337, The Supper of the Lord, number 337. Share the sorrow. 
Second communion songs number 685. I know that my Redeemer lives, number 685. Let us pray.
Through these sacrificial gifts which we have received, O Lord, bestow on your departed servants your great mercy. And to those you have endowed with the grace of baptism, grant also the fullness of eternal joy. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Bow your heads and pray for God's blessing. Respond to each prayer with amen. May the God of all consolation bless you, for in his unfathomable goodness he created the human race, and in the resurrection of his only begotten Son, he has given believers the hope of rising again. Amen. To us who are alive, may God grant pardon for our sins, and to all the dead a place of light and peace. Amen. Amen. So may we all live happily forever with Christ, whom we believe truly rose from the dead. Amen. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Friends, please be seated for a moment. Good evening. For those of you who don't know me, I'm David Butel. I'm a staff here at St. Thomas More. And in the past year, we've had more than 60 funerals for here at St. Thomas More and St. Catharines. And we sent out an invitation for those who have lost a loved one to come to this Mass this evening. And thank you for those who are, have come. Uh, we did ask that you reply because we have a reception afterwards, but we also have roses that we want to give out to the families of those who have a loved one die and, and let, us, that let us know that you are coming. So as I read the name of the deceased loved one, I ask one member of the family to come forward and to receive a rose from Father Justin and know of our continued love and prayers for you. Beverly Allen. Bill Brady. Michael Bua. Antoinette Sapola. Margaret Sisper. <laughs> Teresa Dunlevy. Martha Hintz. Patrick Hughes.
Jimmy and Mike Keneally. John Cone. Mel Corfidge. Mary Looney. John Murray. Della Potter. Lawrence Ruin. Jim Sec. Tim Steffens. Bill Turner. Dr. Bernie Efforts. Rebecca Lucito Hyman. Mary Adams. We do have a reception this evening after the Mass in the Narthex. I hope you will uh, stay and, and join us for the refreshments. Friends, please stand. As David mentioned, there's a reception in the Narthex immediately after. We hope that uh, many can gather and uh, share some fellowship. Um, also in the corner of the church to your left is our table, our display for November, remembering our deceased loved ones during the month. Uh, so if you have a loved one, uh, 
um, including the one that we're honoring here this evening, who we've commended to the Lord, that you'd like the community at large to remember, you're welcome to bring over a framed photo throughout the month. Also on display are our books of remembrance for both the St. Thomas More and the St. Catherine of Siena community. They're also on display throughout the month of November. And finally, a word of thanks to our musicians. Uh, they're made up uh, primarily of members from the uh, St. Catherine of Siena community who are here with us uh, this evening. So, so grateful to have them with us today. And brothers and sisters, the Mass is ended. Let us go in peace. Thanks, Thanks God. God. Our closing song is number 677, Be Still My Soul, number 677. Still.